You're listening to Your Worst Friend with Shane and Matt going deeper, season three. We are joined by, I mean, maybe the fastest rising star I've ever seen in this <laughs> industry. It's absolutely insane. Every time you check her Twitter or anything else, it's just, oh, another 10,000 people just decided this chick rules and I need to make sure I follow her. Uh, we are joined today by mm-hmm. Connie Perignon. Nailed it. Hi. I am going to teach you how to spell that name because our listeners are dumb. Um, because I want you to follow her everywhere. So Connie Perignon, P-E-R-I-G-N-O-N. Okay. Best place to find her on Twitter is Con Perignon, C-O-N-N-P-E-R-I-G-N-O-N. You can go to onlycons.com, O-L-O-N-L-Y-C-O-N-N-S.com, uh, which leads to her OnlyFans, which is Con Perignon. Uh, her Instagram Currently, we'll see when this episode comes out how many more she'll run through between now and then is uh, not Connie Perignon. And uh, the best thing to do is go to Linktree. And uh, I know our listeners know what a Linktree is. It's, you know, spelled L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E, some ridiculous thing. S- go follow her there, Con Perignon, C-O-N-N-P-E-R-I-G-N-O-N. Connie Perignon, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Not bad at all. Only getting better. Um, so I have done some background research on you. You, I've okay. listened to interviews you've done. I did some front ground research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, first off, let me start with this. You have a tattoo on your left leg. It's a cameo. Yes. It's a portrait, right? Yeah. Something like that. My mm-hmm. wife wants one of those really bad. Is that Anne Frank? <laughs> um, no, it is not. Sorry to disappoint. Um, I have gotten asked that a few times. I've gotten Anne Frank. Okay. I've gotten Helen Keller. Which, okay. to be honest, I don't even personally know what Helen Keller looks like. Mary Shelley. Um, It's neither of those women. You know, the crazy Um, thing, Helen Keller doesn't know what she looks like either. So there's that. Uh, (laughs) She she looks like whatever you want her to to look like. Um, Yeah, it's actually it's Edith Piaf, uh, the French chanteuse Edith Piaf. Um, It's the only portrait I have. Oh, of course. Yeah. That yeah one. If you're going to get a portrait of somebody, get someone everybody knows. Sure. Makes <laughs> yeah, total, total sense to me. Yeah. Um, what, yeah what, I also get people asking me if it's my grandma and I'm like, yeah, my white grandmother, of course. <laughs> <laughs> sure. This is my white uh, Nazi-ish blonde haired grandma. What is this person famous for? Can I ask that? Uh, I know, um, but Shane doesn't. He's stupid. Okay. Uh, she's saying La Vion Rose. As well as Non Je ne regret rien and a bunch of really iconic songs. She, I say she's akin to like Frank Sinatra okay. of France. Okay. okay. Wow. God damn, we're in way over our head here, Shane. <laughs> this girl yeah, is. She's a little too smart for you, man. Yeah, it's really a problem. And, Don't uh, let the boobs fool you, okay? Uh, trust me, I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I've looked at your pictures plenty of times over the last couple months and your videos, and I've studied them deeply. Um, here's Well, here's my stupid fucking question that I want to start with. What's your second choice for a stage name? Tomorrow, something comes up and goes, oh, Connie Perignon is actually, so you didn't realize this, it's copywritten by Disney. Uh, so what are we going with for hmm. our second one? I think I've always liked the name Zoe. Okay, me too. So maybe Zoe. I don't know if it fits me, but okay. Zoe. Uh, what's another name that I like? I don't know. That's, I've never been asked that before. I like have no idea. <laughs> There you go. Zoe Fireball. Zo- I was going to say Fireball. <laughs> Zoe well, Johnny Walker. I feel like when I was younger, like the idea of like a Zoe Valentine or something was kind of cute, but I don't know. <laughs> That's not bad. You could, oh, you could go, you could be like more, a little more urban with it. You could go with like uh, Zoe Alizé 
or mm. Hennessy or something like that. Zoe that would be booty pretty cool. So the funniest thing is that I actually don't drink alcohol. That's funny. All right. So That's funny. I have never had Dom Perignon. <laughs> well, uh, me either. Yeah, Shane and I are currently sober, um, but I've never had it either. But that's okay. a poor, that's a poorness issue. Now, wait, are you are you actively sober? You choose not to drink alcohol? Do you straight edge? I am allergic to alcohol, so it's not this like fun, crazy story. I just literally, my body is. I'm too much. Oh, my light went off. I'm too much of a baby, so I just cannot handle alcohol. Gotcha. So when gotcha. yeah, when you say allergic, do you have like a reaction or are you just like a lightweight? You you pass out real quick. I I have a reaction. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, I noticed the, that. Go, yeah. yeah. It's, it's um, like my uh, my wife is um uh she's Asian as well and um I'm around uh Asian people all the time and it's just something I notice like always breaking out when the alcohol comes out. There's always hives, people get itchy. And um, yeah. I don't, I don't drink either, but that's just because I turn my garage into my thrash factory <laughs> every time I do. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been like truly drunk because it just happens so quickly. So if I ingest any kind of alcohol, any at all, there's like maybe five to eight minutes of me being like, whoa, fine, whatever. And then my face starts to get really hot. My head starts pounding, start breathing really heavy. And then that's when I know, okay, I'm, I'm, I need to throw up. Um, and so then I throw up and then probably immediately after I throw up, I'm like, okay, time to go to sleep. So it's like not this like cute, fun story. I have gotten drunk literally off of a cupcake oh, yeah. i've gotten drunk off of a vitamin c packet okay true um even kombucha is i think too fermented for me so my face starts to get hot from for uh wow. kombucha yeah 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 you ever chug mm. imitation of vanilla extract no, but I can smell the alcohol off of it. So I'm always a little worried that it might be the thing, you know? <laughs> It'd be funny if just before this interview, she's like, I'm just going to mouthwash real quick. And then we got uh, her and she's all like, I don't even fucking hi. know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> we got Whatever. the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> um, so could you please tell us your entrance into the adult industry or the sex worker industry um, and how you jumped into it and you were like, commitments there it's time to time to do this yeah so i started in sex work as a sugar baby when i was 18 did that for about a year met a guy so i stopped doing that um and i went the traditional corporate route so i worked in marketing for a very long time for a very very large brand and just kind of did the vanilla thing for a little bit and near the end of my time there i realized that i didn't want to work for anyone else anymore so i had a girlfriend who was like well you used to sugar how about you try this again so i tried it again and within a few months i was like no i feel confident in this like i think i I'm good at this. So I moved into escorting, um, which is really, I, I, I think that sugaring is like a, being like a baby escort. Basically. Escort light kind of, right? Exactly. Escort light. Uh, so, and how I started doing escorting was I just put a proton mail in my Twitter bio and it kind of just took off. And so I had been doing that for a few years and in, I think March, I think March, uh, Jules Jordan asked if I wanted to do a porn and to be honest, it was never really in the roadmap for me. I am still kind of getting used to being on camera and all of that. But I kind of just thought, why not? This will make for a hilarious story if that. So I did the first one and it blew up online. Um, it came out at the end of April and it blew up. So I was like, okay, let's try to do another one. Make it like a thing, you know? Um, and then the second one blew up and every single one has been pretty successful. So this is all kind of a 
the plans are changing constantly and for now i'm like okay try this for a year and see after a year where you're at but yeah that's my little sure timeline can, can i i think everyone who works a corporate job hates a fucking corporate job unfortunately we don't all uh look like you or have your intelligence so some of us have to sit at a desk can i ask you it was marketing you don't have to tell me the company obviously what kind of industry was it um, it's a CPG, so a consumer packaged package good. goods. Yep. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I work in big pharma, so on my normal day job. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I get it. I get that I grind where in store. No, you don't. <laughs> uh, I fucking, I, I totally get that grind and I look at it every day. Like this is what I'm doing now because I'm trying to make something out of this. It's so funny that you say that because you have almost the exact same path as somebody you just shot with that we've interviewed in the past. Do you know who I'm talking about or no? Kazumi? Nope. John Legendary. Oh, yeah. 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 Just just a guy who was, uh, uh, same as you, I, I believe, super intelligent, probably had a really good paying job and just went, fuck it, this ain't for me, man. Like, is that what you got? Um, is that like, were you sitting at a desk? Was there a turning point one day where you were just like, fuck, fuck this, I got to just go back to doing something I prefer. Because I think we've all had those moments and you're one of the rare people who has that mix of intelligence and go get itness where you actually went, no, nah, I'm packing my shit up, I'm leaving. And that's so rare, you know? I think there was a lot of moments where I felt like, okay, maybe this is not it. I mean, I don't regret my corporate life at all. I think it really taught me how to be a professional adult. Like I say that all the time. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a scheduled person. If I say I'm going to be somewhere at four o'clock, you'll see me at four o'clock. I'm never late. And a lot of that is from this corporate training and having to, you know, deal with bureaucracy and all of that. Um, I, one thing that would happen a lot is in the summers. I mean, I live in New York, so you know, summer is really that season that we work up to. We deal with the winters and all of this just so we can have a summer, which is like New York summers are the most fun. It's my favorite season in New York. And in the summers, I would be sitting in my office and just looking outside and be like, wow, it's so beautiful. I'm going to continue to be in here for the entire fucking day. Mm -hmm. And if anything, like I get a little break to go to grab my lunch where I grab my lunch and I bring it back into my office to eat it in my office, you know? And it was like that times a million times. And you're like, wow, I feel like there's more that I could be doing. And I did so much cool shit. You know, the company that I worked for is honestly an amazing, like a really, really cool company. They do a lot of uh, big events uh, across like music and sports and all of that. But at the end of the day, like it's a corporation, they don't care about you. You're no. just building something cool for someone else. And I just felt like, okay, I have the skills from being here and learning like the processes and having like these resources. How can I take that and apply it to my own stuff? Which is kind of how I, I really think part of my success in sex work is because I was able to do that. You know, it's, it's funny because, um, there's so many people that are a type personalities like you like I, I i know if i was in a corporate office and i had a connie working under me i'd be like okay i have nothing to worry about and in my industry there's a ton of dumb people remember that the next time you go to take some new medicine but um there's always one person in the group that carries the weight and i always look at that person and i don't look down on that person but i do look at them and go you are too good for this you're too good for excel sheets um handing them over to a boss who's charging the client four times five times whatever it is right put that effort that type of personality that everything else 
into your own thing. And I always commend people. I mean, we interview big name stars. We interview a lot of amateur stars recently we've been doing. And I always say like with these girls that are just starting out on OnlyFans or just starting out shooting scenes, I tell them you're young, figure out what you like to do and work hard at it regardless of what it is. Because there's a CEO of waste management somewhere. There is a top boss for any kind of job. So if you want to get into an industry and work your way up, that's fine. But also, if you have a personality like Connie has here, try it yourself, man. There's plenty of time left. And honestly, even this that you're jumping into now and everything else, sure, it probably would be a little bit difficult to go back to the corporate world. But I don't think impossible because you just have too much brain power. I mean, you might have to wear it like she'd make it work girdle to hold these things (laughs) down or something like that. But um or maybe not. Maybe you could just be a sales yeah. rep and just fucking destroy the entire industry. But, <laughs> um, you know, I think it's I think it's awesome when when people in general, but especially women, go out there and make something of themselves. And I think it's an entrepreneur story that's kind of looked down on by society when we're talking about porn. But, you know, what did Steve Jobs do? He used his brain. You're using your body and your brain to an extent as well. What's the fucking difference at the end of the day? Yeah, I think it's also, it's really hard when you are so busy in your full-time job or whatever to even find the time or energy to try new things. You know, I think for me, that was a big thing where I had all these personal projects on the side, but when you're working, especially like what I was doing, when we're working events, you if you're at work, you get to work at nine o'clock and you're there until let's say 4 p.m. And at 4 p.m. you have to rush to go to the venue and set up and do all that stuff. And you're there until four in the morning. Where do you have time to work on your personal stuff? Like your personal stuff just gets thrown to the side. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh shit, I have this project that I started on two, three months ago. And I just literally have not had the time or energy to even start it. And at a certain point, I feel like we make these excuses for ourselves of like, oh, well, you know, I'm working on this at work. So you know, this isn't a good time. I'll just try to find. And next thing you know, you will never find the time. And your work is everything, you know? Next thing you know, you're 60 years old. And you're looking back and you're going, I never finished that. I never even started that for some people, you know? It's like the lyrics to that Pink Floyd song, Time. Okay, good. Thank (laughs) you. (laughs) Um, So let me ask you this, kind of piggybacking off of that. And I swear, people, we will eventually get into porn discussion. But... (laughs) <clears throat> um, let me do the rudest thing possible and make an assessment of you here. Okay. In terms of personality, what percentage break down? There's going to be three percentages and okay. yeah. All right. You're working in porn for the sex, the money, the fame. What percentage you think each of those things are? And then I have a piggyback question to that as well. Um, money. You could even just rank them one, two, three. Okay. Money, fame, sex. So that, wow. Okay. All right. Mm. So, so that, I don't mean, I, I hope this doesn't come off rude. I don't mean it to be. Um, Go you ahead. are phenomenal in your scenes. Um, everything you tell me though, do you have a clear delineation between sex and business, even if the business is sex. Do you have like, like, do you ever go into a scene and shoot a scene and you've only shot very few of them, which we will get into because somehow you just fucking, all you do is hit grand slams with the people you work (laughs) with. Um, I mean, new people coming up must be so fucking jealous of you. And that rules with the people you've worked with. But (laughs) I, I think do you ever get any kind of emotional attachment when it comes to sex? I personally would say no, having listened to an interview with you. Maybe I'm wrong and correct me if I am. I have. I okay. definitely have. Um, I think every time it kind of happens, it, there's a learning experience from that. And I try to reel it in. But I mean, it's hard, you know, like 
when you're working with someone that you're attracted to and the sex is good and like sometimes you can get like kind of in your head and do this stupid thing but yeah it's hard it's definitely something that does happen okay. is it professional probably not <laughs> no no but i i bet you're also the type you have a good personality where yes that happens in the moment but you do have a clear way of separating that right yeah I, you get that from a lot of strong-willed independent smart women where they can take something like that because i would assume a girl who's very emotionally attached would have a problem in this industry uh, to an extent you know jumping in and uh which is funny let me lead that into so you've shot with some of the biggest names in the industry jules jordan right off the bat one of the biggest names in the industry uh you shot recently with manuel ferrera right mm -hmm. you know scene came out nice. i have seen countless videos that the scene ends with manuel ferrera and then a girl is like crying with him like oh my god that was just so wonderful and i watch that and i'm like fucking delete from my history so my wife doesn't see that people actually enjoy this um, <laughs> but uh you know you you shot with these huge names that come out and that's what I meant. I, again, I don't mean to insult, I don't mean you're a robot who, you know, by the way, if you were a robot, they would build them exactly to look like you in the future. <laughs> yeah, um, you. She's the hottest Terminator I've ever seen in my life. But I, 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 I made an assessment and you're telling me I'm wrong. So that's awesome. That's good to hear that you have the clear ability to separate those things. And maybe not. Sometimes it bleeds over and that's human of you. And that's good to hear. There's that's no question. Biology. About that. Yeah, <laughs> I think with with other male talent, it's easier for me to create those lines and those boundaries because porn is something that is so new for me. And so I'm very much just like hi i'm happy to be here <laughs> you know i have literally said that on set multiple times which i'm trying to do less of because i'm like don't act like such a fan um but because of that i i very much feel this like power dynamic of me just like oh i'm new i'm open and whatever so with male talent it's way easier for me to like develop those boundaries because it's i'm like oh this is like a star you know and i'm just me i don't know <laughs> sure but uh, well, by the same token you are the hottest new star out there so uh, you know uh, I would say that again, watching your follower count go up is, is just insane, but people love you. And the few scenes you've done are just some of the hottest things I've ever seen. So <laughs> there has to be some power in being, it's not like high school where the new girl or new kid get picked on, you know, you're the new girl, but you're the in demand girl, right? So have you had, oppor I mean, have you just been having opportunities flood in that you're having to decide between? Yeah, I've been pretty lucky in just getting a lot of opportunities right out the gate. Um, I will say now, being the new girl, uh, there's constantly people asking to shoot content with me. Um, and people talking about me as well. Um, I've heard male talents talking about me and they're like, oh, is that, that's the new girl, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I try to be pretty selective about the things that I tie my brand to. Um, everything I've done is very much pretty close to who I am as a person. And I try to keep it that way. I would never want to do anything that I feel embarrassed about or aren't proud of. Um, I like productions where the girls look pretty like that's my number one thing i'm like do the girls look pretty yes or no sure. and um yeah i've i just i've been really lucky and just getting opportunities my way and i'm super super grateful for it if anything i think it's less about me and more about these big players in the industry seeing something in me and extending that opportunity towards me Sure. You said uh, you said before a roadmap, and that makes sense to me. But I see you personally on a trajectory and you tell me if I'm wrong and maybe I need to ask you, you know, three years in the future when you've been in this for a while. Do you have any mainstream ambitions? 
kind of the Sasha Gray, the uh, who else was in it? Bella Donna was in a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, I believe. Do you have any down the line or are you still just getting used to this right now? I think I'm still figuring it out. I don't really know what I even want from porn in general. Um, I really just went for it because of the numbers, like seeing very visually, okay, this shit is going crazy. I should probably do this. And also having a lot of friends in the industry who were super supportive and we're like, wow, you're going to fucking kill it. Like, you should totally do this. So I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm open to it. I mean, I've been told forever that I would be a good, uh, at first it was fashion blogger when YouTube like popped off, um, reality TV show star, um, which I will say, because I'm smart, I know what they want. Mm-hmm. in reality tv so i think i personally would kill it um what else dj is another one that i've been oh, told that would be good <laughs> that's a good gig man you go up there with that bright green yellow thing you're wearing there you just have oh, something think- yeah those right there <laughs> yeah i'm looking away to be modest um oh, as i'm dead mouse hats shot. yeah yeah you go up there with some pre-programmed shit you just make it seem like you're touching stuff you yeah. go like this yeah. Boom. That's 50 grand in a night for you. Just like Paris Hilton makes. I think that's awesome. Um, Shane, do you want to get any questions in here? Uh, I don't. I could literally talk to Connie all night. I wrote shit on a legal pad. Okay? I wanted I to that. actually ask at the beginning when you asked about Anne Frank. Um, I wanted to <laughs> ask uh, what the tattoo on your arm was. Um, it, it looks almost like it could be a portrait. Uh, let me let me pin you so you're bigger on my chat here yeah yeah who's that is that like a so this is actually a depiction of chinese opera oh my god so so cultured yeah so this is like they have like crazy headdresses and like this like red blush makeup um and it's super like ornate and intricate and funny enough like Traditionally, the women in Chinese opera were actually all played by men. Oh, well, yeah. so I guess it's, you could technically say this is a man on my arm, but so, so right. yeah, that kind of like yeah, that's that was the springboard for my actual question. How did you get all this like class and culture and uh, and sophistication? Where where is all this coming from? What in your background makes you know about French poets and Chinese opera? Who are you? Um, I think it's being too smart for my own good. So I was a weirdo kid. I was a computer kid. Okay. <laughs> so I I taught myself how to use Photoshop when I was eight. Um, I started my first business when I was nine. Wow. Um, I shortly thereafter taught myself how to code. Um, I was one of those weirdo kids. Um, I've started, I think, probably oh. five businesses by now. Um, so porn but, really wasn't in the cards for you. Like it was, it was all like executive. You were Steve Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say Steve Jobs. No. Um, I was just a weird kid. I don't know. I, I'm super creative. I'm super like aesthetic focused so i'd really care about how things look and it's more of that that like creative and and control bit i think that i kind of just ran with it um yeah i don't know i'm just weird so so were you like a super sexual person like were you sexual minded um like at all or was sex always just like a means to an end like was it always like even when you were a sugar baby was it like well I'm going to capitalize off my looks, my sex appeal. I'm going to make a smart decision or was, or I mean, or, or like, do you think about sex even? I, I would say that I'm a very sexual person. I was very sexual when I was a kid. I think nowadays because I'm having so much sex, I Mm crave it less it's less of a thing i feel like 
normally now when I get horny, it's because I haven't worked in like a week. Okay. Because okay. I just need to like miss it. I don't know. Because yeah. when you're having so much sex and you actually get tired, like your body is physically sore. So you need time to like recuperate. But I was super sexual as a kid. Um, I started masturbating when I was like four holy fucking shit like, what? you know but it's still masturbating sure and i lost my virginity when i was 12 God damn yeah and for the most part had only dated older guys like i to this day i don't think i've i've never dated someone who's younger than me um <laughs> but yeah i I, for a little bit, I was like, am I asexual? Because, like, I don't really crave sex anymore. I'm not asexual. I just have too much sex. I try to believe it's what it is. Sure, sure. Well, that kind of rings back to my other question. I, I meant to piggyback this earlier, but the way you ranked them, you know, money, fame, sex. If I, uh, if I offered you mm -hmm. twice as much then you are going to make for the rest of your career. Okay. So this year you're making X amount. I'm saying twice that, and we'll just do projections 10 years from now. You're making this double that. So work in another industry. Would you take that? Depends on what the industry is. There you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> say it's sewage uh, treatment. <laughs> What am I doing in sewage? Am I treating the sewage? No, no, you're no, no, you're it's designing, <laughs> designing the uniforms. How's that? Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Green okay. and yellow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's interesting because, you know, I, it, there's, there's no, to us at least, to me, I don't know, there's no right way to do porn. If you had a girl who came on here and said, I don't give a fuck about sex, means dick to me, I don't care about it, paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. I hate it. I'm about that money. I would love that. I'm fine with that. You women should be able to just do whatever the fuck you want to do. If a girl came on and said, you know, she was like, I like getting laid every day. And I was like, oh, well, what do you make for that? And she goes, money. What? I would just be like, yeah, great. Good for you, too. I don't care what you do you at the end do of the day. do it for free, I guess. Sure. So, <laughs> you know, hey, you got to know what you want. And uh, I, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, all right. Now for the people. Actually. Let's get into some sex questions, and then if you're comfortable with it, I want to get into some race questions because there was a good bit of interviews I've heard with you that is really interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so sex questions. How many official scenes are out currently of you? I, uh, I believe six. Okay, okay. Um, I saw you post earlier today, I believe, on Twitter. Um, not that this is planned. You were just putting it out there, but... Um, is there any type of blow bang in your future? I think so. Okay. I mean, it's something that I personally find very hot. I think I'm just waiting for the right time. I'm going to give it a little bidding war sort of action. We'll that's, see. That's, that's, but I already had a director, um, text me saying I'm down to do the blow bang. Sure. See, <laughs> so we'll see. I love them too. They're some of my favorite, but I think it would contrast what you like. You seem like you like highlighting, good production value. I like a site like blowbanggirls.com where it's just like one ring light on a chick and it's like, jump on in, guys. You know? <laughs> Um, I you got myself, one hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My myself enjoy the filth personally, the filth aspect of it. Um, so down the line, what else are we now? One other thing. Sorry, I know I'm dominating this, but I just find you so fascinating. I've talked to girls who have been in both mindsets, right? And I'll use just this as an example, anal as an example. Some girls who did it early on right away and just went, I want to let my fucking fans know I'm here for everything. I'm good to go. And then there's other girls who, you know, milked it time wise and got that price up and everything else. Um, one is anal in your future repertoire. Two, which of those two paths do you think is the better for you if it's yes? I think I can answer both questions in the same answer. Um, I'm not an anal girl. I'm just not. I wish I was. I like, 
I see when some other girls in the industry are doing, I'm like, well, that's crazy. I have trouble. I have trouble. That's that it is what it is. So I do think down the line, eventually I'm going to have to figure it out. Um, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. It's something that gets demanded of me nearly every day. And I'm just like, calm down. Okay. It'll happen when it happens. Um, the time's but right. I know when I know, I, I know that when it does, it's going to be insane. Sure. Sure. So say anal was out of the equation is a gangbang in the equation. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. okay. Absolutely. Didn't even have to finish that sentence. <laughs> sure, sure. So let me ask, what is so appealing about a gangbang? Because I can tell you what it is for me from a male watching it. I watch a chick get just totally satisfied. It's not like a total domination thing. It's, I don't like, you know, violent ones or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I do like watching a chick just like, because I picture it like a guy. Like, imagine I'm getting blown by a chick, and then she's like, oh, my mouth's a little tired. And then another one comes on, and you're just like, oh, this is great. Huh. <laughs> do chicks see it the same way? Females, women, sorry. You're too smart to call you chicks. Uh, do women see it the same type of way where it's just, like, constant pleasure? Like, there's obviously work to it as well, but, you know. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but personally, I... I love the idea of being the center of attention and that's definitely what you get with like a blow bang or a gang bang. Um, yeah. I don't sure. know. Maybe I'm an attention whore. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, Shane, did you have any questions for Connie here? Well, I think we're getting to that point. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just ask it. I think I already know the answer. How do you feel about piss? How do I feel about piss? I have nothing. I have no feelings actually about piss. Um, I have never been peed on. Surprise, surprise. That's like very <laughs> shocking for people. I have been the peer, but never the peed. P-E. P-E. P-E or peed. I like P-E. <laughs> the mom. But. It, it doesn't it doesn't add or subtract anything for me personally okay, okay. you're All apathetic right. neutral on that yeah i mean i will say so i i used to waterboard my ex with my piss nice. and that was very very fun oh i bet yeah for him yeah must have been <laughs> but like for me personally i don't know one i don't think i would like waterboarding two probably not with piss i don't know i don't know <laughs> Um, all right, into the discussion that, that I I'm a little like, you know, treading lightly on. Um, I have heard you talk that you don't like necessarily the interracial tag that's attached to things. You are, well, let me finish the sentence. You are a beautiful Asian woman. You would like to just be known as a beautiful woman from what I heard you say. Um, <sighs> Do you think going forward, we should all make an attempt, not us, we're interviewing you. I don't work in the industry <laughs> industry. Do you think the industry should make an attempt to take that out of things, uh, classifying by race or, or anything like that? Or, and again, everyone can have their own preference. Would it be your preference to remove those types of tags out of things? My preference, yes, but I can kind of understand them but i think for me it's i think part of the asian american experience is never really feeling like you're one or the other right like growing up all i wanted to seem is like oh i'm american but obviously optically when people look at me they're like well you're asian but you know when i go to taiwan it's like oh well you're american so it's this constant like back and forth of not feeling like i'm any group per se and because of it i don't I don't really like people focusing on like me being Asian, my ethnicity or anything, because I don't really think it is a proper dis description or descriptor of me. You know, like when people are like, well, you're so you're the hottest Asian girl I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm a hot girl, period. Right. I'm, I'm 
hot girl. Like, let's leave it at that. Yeah, you know, I never really considered how saying you're the hottest Asian girl I've ever seen could really be misinterpreted. Uh, to me, I I personally, I don't I don't like or dislike the tags, but I know certain things I'm searching out makes it a lot easier to throw a tag on there, you know, like, you know, uh, black girl, 16 white guys or, uh, you know, um, any of those other things I might do it. But I also think tags like that because if we we talk about race and we'll go race first let's just cut those out yeah. but then do we go into body shape and we cut those out and then do we go into age do we cut those out and i worry that people might get left in the dust who fit into specific niches not necessarily asian or ebony or whatever you want to call it but you know people in MILF porn or, uh, you know, any of the other uh, BBW, anything like that. Small My, penis humiliation videos. Sure, <laughs> yeah, we watch plenty of those on the show. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I just personally think, you know, or then eventually are we eventually cutting the trans thing out of niches and just saying, like, this is a person and a person, you know? Um, I think it opens the opportunity for people looking for specific things. Now, when we're talking about guys or girls, probably guys, though, who are fetishizing you specifically because of a race, I could understand why that would be negative to you. But I don't know. I think I think there is a benefit to to categorizing and breaking things up. Yeah, I think my my issue is not about categories or whatever because like you said i i can see how they benefit how people benefit from that yeah. i the issue is more of the like overarching fetishization sure. i i believe that is it's, beyond just categories is how people talk about you yeah it's, it's how about, they view you yeah yeah exactly you know like i i so, recently had something oh. happen where i was shooting with someone and he just started saying all this like Asian shit, you know, like, like in a voice too. Like he hit you with that voice. No, but like, okay. started, like, you know, just mentioning my, my Asian pussy. I'm an Asian slut. I'm an Asian, whatever. And it's just like, I don't think it adds anything because obviously people can see with their eyes. I'm Asian. Like maybe if you mention it one time, but if you're constantly bringing it up, I'm like, Oh, you're, you're making this an Asian thing now. Like it wasn't before. And now it's like focused on me being Asian, which I think is weird. Yeah. But what about Helen Keller? <laughs> she doesn't know you're Asian. <laughs> I <laughs> not no, i'm asian no <laughs> okay fair enough um yeah i was see, thinking uh, man i was thinking we we take it and you mentioned um eliminating trans tags if we get too you know rigid about how we define things and i was thinking what we we should actually take a, a page from their playbook and just you you start you know uh broadening or no i'm sorry narrowing the tags but adding more of them because i think asian is ridiculous it's like over a billion people well over a billion people in asia and and a bunch of them are white people you know so it's like uh why not have like uh you know you, you've heard about like old men and stuff and there was like oh if only i had uh, you know uh had been with a danish gal when i was overseas oh, if only had gotten that danish gal like maybe just have like a Taiwanese tag, Taiwanese American tag, Filipina tag, Filipina American, you know, like, um, cause I, I feel like, um, there, there is a market for it. And I feel like it, it's not my business to kink shame. And I don't think it's like, um, absurd for porn for, for people to like, want to live like a, a fantasy, like, um, like a very specific fantasy. And I could see that involving a country, you know, but Asian, um it's too uh, broad for you asian asian is the, way too broad yeah i think the issue with that is people don't know different types of asian oh i know them all too specific <laughs> shane uh shane married a beautiful uh filipino girl and he has taught me so much about the philippines um in our time being there. friends no no but you said they eat a lot of stuff with vinegar 
So I think yeah. it would be cool to watch some porn with some beautiful Filipino women eating vinegar stuff. <laughs> and I would like that as a new category, vinegar eating. Um, <laughs> I don't vinegar know. bore. Uh, Is bore uh, when you eat stuff? Or just people. It's when you nah, eat people. It's like when people are little. People. Yeah, that's okay. fucking weird. Uh, no, you know, hey, everyone. No king shaming. Head. No, no king shaming. It's weird. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, I have just a couple more questions for you. Answer this one honestly, and I ple- I will not ask you any names. How many athletes are in your DMs right now? Well, I just lost my Instagram. So <sighs> How about How Twitter? Many- Nothing? Yeah. On Twitter, I don't really get athletes, actually. They're oh normally God. on Instagram. So right before you lost your Instagram. <laughs> How many athletes were in your Instagram? Uh, uh, you don't have to give an exact number. Just confirm for us. Athletes are in your Instagram. Yes. No? Yeah, there yes. you go. Okay. At least 11 at this very moment. So I'm thinking definitely Giants and definitely Knicks are in there. Um, I'm a big sports fan. Sorry. Um, One of those is right. Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what size shoe do you think he would have? 22 or 11? What? What size shoe do you think this person would have? I didn't know they made shoes at 22. Oh, yeah. Well, Shaq, I think, wore a 24 size shoe. Basically, I was trying to get out of you, whether it was a football player or a basketball yeah, player. Yeah, I did. So I did make a mistake one time. This was years ago. And a, a, a basketball player slid into my DMs. And this was like before I was a sex worker. So I was like very woo about it, you know. Yeah. And um, I looked up who he was. I had no idea who he was. And he was having this like moment in basketball, I guess. Oh. And I'm sorry, that's I had They're ordered. Totally food. Gonna no, go back. ahead. Go. Do um, you want to go get it? I can pause this. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna grab go it. Go ahead, and then you restart the story for us. Okay, okay. Um, so I don't know right now because I just lost my Instagram, but I have a funny story regarding an athlete. So a few years ago, this basketball players slid into my dms and this was before i was a sex worker so i was very much like oh my god look and uh he was having a bit of a moment in his career so he was like very very hot and i didn't know who he was personally but i looked him up and he is very tall Hmm. so i made a stupid tweet of like oh my god this this player just slid my dms he's like x amount of like he's this tall immediately everybody started being like oh my god is it this person is this person and i'm like oh my god how did everyone know i didn't realize that at his height he is definitely that's like not normal like that is above average so obviously immediately everybody was clocking it like oh my god it must be this dude and I was like oh my god delete 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 like I was like freaking out because I was like oh no I just outed this poor guy Manute Bowl he's Uh, been uh, found out see my first guess and if you give any indication it's the person I will bleep out the name I promise you Um, my first guess and now this is going to seem like I'm being racist but let me make the connection here my first guess was Jeremy Lin but he is not that tall. Asian guys don't like me. But here's the, I don't know of any person on earth who has a penis who doesn't love you. I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ, look what I'm looking at here, please. And then your person, you know why maybe guys might not like you? When you start talking and they're like, holy shit, I'm dumber than her. I'm so much <laughs> Very intimidated, yeah. So I was going to say Jeremy Lin, because for the Knicks, he had a moment, man. He was, cr- I mean, he had like a three-week span. That was what Lin sanity was. Now you're talking about height. Mello wasn't a center. I'm trying to look for keys on her face. Mello wasn't a center. How many years ago was this? Um, I feel like it was maybe like seven years ago. Wow. 
you know what? I'm honestly, I'm not going to know. The Knicks have been so bad for so long. It's so funny. I keep saying Knicks, and it's going to be one from my team, the 76ers. It's going to be Joel Embiid. Um, I don't know anybody on the 76ers. Okay, okay. So <laughs> I will I will find this out. I will not tell anyone. You all have to follow Connie at Con <laughs> Perignon, C-O-N-N-P-E-R-I-G-N-O-N on Twitter. Uh, only cons.com, only c o n n s.com, which leads to her OnlyFans, which is Con Perignon. Uh, Instagram, she's not currently on it, but if you follow not Connie Perignon, maybe you'll see something cool. Um, and check out her link tree, it's Con Perignon. Um, we're gonna wrap up soon here, get you off of here, send you out, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, it, uh, let me tell you something. Um, if I, Watch this creepy setup to this whole thing. Ready? If I had three hours alone with you, Connie, <laughs> let me tell you what I would do. Okay. I would look over your shoulder as we both went down a Wikipedia hole together. Cause I think we're like the same type of person where you get on something and then do you ever connect branches and go to the next? Oh my thing? God. You... Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Wait, I need to tell you something. Have you ever played the Wikipedia game? The, no, no. I played the movie game. You ever it's do like that Candy one Man? You connect acting. Yeah, okay, you so stare in a mirror and you go, game. Wikipedia, Wikipedia, Wikipedia. <laughs> so the Wikipedia game, it's more fun the more people you have. But basically, you, t- you grab two people and they both just like blurt out something random. And you have to go from one to the other, only going in Wikipedia links. Yeah. But then whoever gets there first... It's like, oh, you win, right? But then that person also has to go through their process of like where they jumped from, which is super, super interesting because everybody has different, you know, like references and like knowledge bases. So like the way, like finding out how your friend like made the connections, you're like, whoa, that's so crazy because nobody ever does like the same exact thing. Right. You start with Adam Levine and you end up on General MacArthur somehow. And you're like, how the fuck did I get here? Another part of the game is sometimes you you think like, oh, that's like so impossible. And then you get it in like three minutes because it's really not that hard. So that's the other part of the game is like picking two words that are hard enough where it goes on for a little bit. I think one of my best wins was going from serbia to hypodermic needle impressive i could do that in one step could you go do ahead it. i mean Shane. all, all the pictures i've seen of serbia include hypodermic needles strewn uh, about so okay well yeah that's <laughs> not great um all right well let's let's end it on a little bit of sexy talk at least i saw you post <laughs> today or yesterday um that you are a big fan of the facial yes okay cool um would you (laughs) would you ever shoot a bukkake scene yeah okay all right cool yeah there you go big fan of easy answer no i love fixed it's i i like to joke that it's like my most most toxic trait but i prefer a facial over anything else there's just something like so degrading about someone coming on your face i don't know i love it Sure, I'm clipping that out later to listen to. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Shane, do you have anything else for Connie today? Uh, no, that last soundbite did it for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to Twitter. Follow Con Perignon. I did not fuck it up once today. I want to point that out. C-O-N-N-P-E-R-I-G-N-O-N. Go to onlycons.com. Only fans, Con Perignon, they'll take you to the same place, but just go there and sign up, please. Instagram, not Connie Perignon, and check out her link tree, whatever weird prefix they do, slash C O N N P E R I G N O N. Connie, my birthday is in a week. I or did not know that. <laughs> what is it? It's on the 10th, right? On the 10th, yeah. Now, let me ask you this when I looked that up before, it did not disclose a year. Do you not disclose a year? And if you don't, it's totally fine. No, I mean, I, I, I will reveal since it'll come out anyway. I'm turning 30. Okay. That uh, okay. is, I would have, you know what? 
it's so weird because I could have gone both ways with it. You look very young. I could have said 24 and been like, yeah, that makes total sense. But then you said you had all this experience working in marketing. So I was like, is she like fucking 35 and looks like this still? I was like, oh, my God, my body's falling apart. And this chick looks like this. <laughs> um, Connie, thank you very much for joining us today. We really thank appreciate you for having it. Me. This is so fun. All right. We'll see you next week, everyone. Thanks. All right. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,